15 minutes later, they called me and gave me the job. Hi friends, welcome back. So, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how I became a software engineer, how I got a job, tips on how to get a software engineering job, tips on choosing what kind of software engineer you want to be, and etc. So, if that interests you, please keep on watching. If you are new, my name is Mendendo, and I basically just do whatever I want on this channel. Honestly, I talk about my life, uh, pageant stuff, because I am competing in Miss California USA 2020 in January, and overall lifestyle things, I guess. So, if that interests you, please go ahead and subscribe. If not, keep watching, I guess, so I can get the minutes, and let's continue the video. So. First, let me start with my journey and how I got the job. What was the most important thing for me to get the job was my experience. After you graduate college, your GPA it doesn't really matter. What, specifically talking about um, software engineering and getting the actual job, not an internship, a job. GPA doesn't really matter, they don't care about that. All they care about is your experience, what you've done in college and your side project. Ranking what is most important on your resume, work experience, internships, side projects. A lot of people think that if they just do side projects here and there, they'll be fine. Not really. Like if you're just doing side projects on your resume, but somebody else has an internship and side projects, they're gonna get the job. Not that you're not going to get a job, but it's going to be a little bit harder to get a job if you don't have any internships. So I, I don't have an internship. I know I just said that it's harder to get a job without an internship, but I didn't get one because I was working and taking summer classes so I couldn't do a summer internship. Now, what saved me was the job I had my last year of college. There was a program at my institution called Metal Lab. It was a branch off of my institution and it was basically a startup where they would teach you how to code in this language and what to do. And then they would pay you to complete projects that people would give us. So one project that um, my company did was create a towing system for, uh, I believe it was the LAPD or I don't know, some police, some police organization. We created an application called Cal State Pays, which basically tells you how much a major will make depending on which college it is and compare all the colleges and things like that. So they were doing big projects. And that itself, the fact that the projects were big and I was getting paid means I had paid work experience as a software engineer. I basically found out about this job looking at my computer science department's job board. So I remember, I remember just seeing the flyer and I was like, oh, what's that? And I went, I did the um, boot camp that they did, had in the summer for two weeks, and then I had to intern there for a month and a half. And then if they liked you, they think that you have potential, they chose you and they started to pay you to be um, a software engineer there at the actual startup. So that was my track and it was great because I didn't really have a college experience as I say so I didn't get to do like a sorority thing. Well, that'll be a different story time about my sorority fail. But that place was basically my college experience I like to say. Like I met great people, I got to hang out with really interesting folks I guess and it was great like you know, being able to say hi and like a, in your classes and stuff like that or just like knowing people because you work with them. It was like a little click and it was really cool. I really appreciated that. So I had that job for a year and since I have the most experience being a back-end web developer, in web development, back-end is the engine, the brake, the radiator, those types of things that make the car actually work. Front-end is uh, the seats, what the car looks like, where the steering wheel is, the dashboard, putting those things in, it made sense to find a job as a back-end developer. Now, <laughs> at the time that I graduated, they were mainly looking for front-end developers. Like that was like the hot new thing, you know, I was like, oh, 
okay so i have to learn front end <laughs> so i learned how to do how learn how to code in javascript and Vue, which is fine because um my projects my senior design projects we were doing front end and back end and since i was a scrum master uh, a scrum master is someone who guides the projects in um, an agile scrum methodology it's something that you'll learn in school so don't worry about it i was the leader whatever i was making sure that we were all learning Vue and excelling in coding in laravel at the same time so we all got the most amount of experience possible for that side project but anyways i learned how to code in javascript using the Vue framework and so i was like great okay now all my friends who were working at this place called metal lab were giving us all of the resources about who's hiring who's not hiring which is why it's so important to go into a place that is specifically designed to get to your career because those people are, are like-minded so everybody there was looking for a job and or internship so somebody would be like hey this person's hiring hey this person's hiring you would apply you get a coding interview this and that blah 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 blah, blah. so the current job that I work at, I found out about it from my friend who also works at the Metal Lab and they recommended me to the recruiter. The recruiter called me, gave me an interview three days after my graduation. And so after I graduated, I, got, I did the interview and then 15 minutes later they called me and gave me the job. So basically I was unemployed for like three days. Which is why I feel like my path is not really that common. I like to say my friend's path, a friend of mine, her path is probably more common where you graduate, you're unemployed for no more than a month and you get a job. So you should get a job as soon as possible because being a software engineer is hot right now. You know, everyone's trying to be a software engineer. If you're graduating or looking for a job around this time, you're in the perfect time. I don't know when the bubble is going to burst, but it's not going to take you longer than a month. Obviously, it depends on the factors, but it shouldn't take you that long. The things that were very important, that if I didn't do these things or didn't have these things, I would not have gotten a job as fast. Networking. Networking is so goddamn important. Like, I can't even explain to you how important that is. Most of the interviews, all of the interviews, all of the interviews that I got was because of somebody else telling me about the job or giving me a recommendation. Uh, I got an interview at Honey from my friend at Metal Lab telling me that they were hiring. I got three coding challenges just from another friend of mine telling me, oh, this is a really good website to find jobs. So it's all about who you know and who you talk to. It's so important not to just be a goddamn recluse and just not talk to anybody. It's not gonna it's not gonna work you can do that but your talent can only take you so far because if i'm being honest people who are normally in this major they're not the most outgoing types so usually when they find someone who is willing to talk and it's willing to be outgoing they're going to hire you because they're looking for leaders so if you just practice your networking skills by going into clubs going into um internships apprenticeships jobs that are that have people who want to do what you do or are trying to do what you do as well then that is perfect practice one to be a leader in your field and two to be likable in your field just networking by itself will get you a job so much faster than just trying to do it on your own because you can't do everything on your own it's just not realistic that's why, um, at least in my institution, they were always trying to put us in teams because in your career, you're working in teams. Like you, you can't avoid people as much as we all want to, as much as I want to. <laughs> we can't avoid people. We're going to always be surrounded by them. We're always going to be talking to them. Networking is something that is mandatory. Also, know your strengths. So a lot of people ask me how I knew I wanted to do web development. I did web development because I had the most experience in web development, so I went to that. The language that I'm strongest in is Python. Even though uh, I was classically trained in Java because that's what they taught us in school, I know Java, yes, great. I don't like to code in Java, 
I prefer to code in Python. I feel like I am the best at Python. But since I was trained professionally the longest in PHP Laravel, PHP Laravel, I became really good at that. And that's what I, th those are the jobs that I applied for. Yes, I can code circles in Python, but I don't have professional experience in Python. So obviously I'm going to, I'm going to go with what gives me like that. So I would say whatever you feel like you have the most experience in, in terms of internships, in terms of jobs, in terms of clubs, in terms of projects, go into that career path. So if you have, so if you have an internship where you coded in Python, then Python, but that's why I love Python. I feel like it's a versatile language. So your options are a lot broader. So that's why I always say like to people learn Python because that way you can like cast your net. You can cast your net very wide. So the job that you want to go for should be what is most similar to your resume. What's most similar to your internships, to your job experience, to, to your clubs and organizations, to your projects because like I said, all they care about when you graduate is your resume. If you haven't chosen an internship yet or don't have a job yet, then I would say go with whatever interests you, honestly. Go with the language that you're strongest in. They usually teach Java in school or C++, one of those object-oriented languages. Then if, you, like, if you're not really that interested in that language, in those languages, then I would definitely say to learn Python. That way you have a broader range of what you can do when you're out of college or what you can do in, in, in internships. And it is kind of like the hot language right now. So everyone is looking for a Python developer. That will open a lot of doors onto what you want to do for an internship, what you want to do for a job, and in the end, what you want to do for your career in software engineering. Also, when you are applying for jobs in the industry, the best thing, it's hot as hell in LA, my AC is on. Do leet code, do hack a rank, do one of those things. One of these websites, they have little challenges that you can do every single day to strengthen your coding skills. Those two websites are non-negotiables, honestly. You need to be doing that every single day, if not every other day, or at least every week. Normally when you apply to a job, they will send you a coding challenge and you need to do that coding challenge. If they like that coding challenge, they'll extend you an interview. So, God, this industry's interviewing process sucks. <laughs> it bites, it's not easy at all, but obviously the rewards are fantastic. In most cases, those coding challenges, the questions are straight out of leap code or straight out of, straight out of hacker rank. So almost every coding challenge that I did, those questions, were the same or if not similar to the hard levels of hack rank and leak code and that is that's fantastic okay because if you can do those hard challenges you can you can do any coding challenge and you will get the interview so once you get the interview the best way to prepare for that as well, obviously, Glassdoor, lead code, hacker rank, those things, knowing algorithms, knowing run times, knowing things like that will get you far. Once you get an interview, using your networking skills, again, like I said, is going to definitely help because people will let you know what's the best way to answer a question. They'll let you know how to do this, how to do that, how to do that, give you tips as well. If you aren't too sure about what to say in interviews, I would definitely recommend practicing on your friends. Even better, practicing to people who are not in your field because obviously they have no idea what you're talking about and that's going to help you explain things even better because you're going to have to explain those little details because they're not going to know what it means. And teaching somebody helps you understand the concept a lot better and that will help you in your interview. That's all I got for now. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I feel like I missed a lot of things. I'm not really sure why, but just leave any questions that you have in the comments. Uh, follow me on my Instagram, that way you can DM me any questions as well. I answer all questions in my DMs. Please reach out to me so that I can help you out the best way that I can. And I will talk to you later, friends. Bye.